Hi guys, I thought you might be interested to see this. Uh, this is a Grease Weasel interface. Uh, basically allows you to connect a uh, floppy drive and support pretty much uh, any format of floppy drive that, uh, that you like. In this case, we're just using a standard three and a half inch floppy uh, PC drive. And out the other side of the interface, it's connecting via USB. You can see it's going into the MacBook over there. And effectively, what this is going to allow us to do is using uh, a bit of software and some, uh, some drivers, obviously, uh, it's going to enable us to read um, non standard uh, floppy disks, non standard at any rate, as far as uh, a PC floppy drive is concerned. Uh, an example of which would be this game here. So this is Buggy Boy, but for the Commodore Amiga. So normally I wouldn't be able to read this disc at all straight into a PC. But in this case, we will be able to. So I'm just using a, a virtual machine here, but the, uh, the floppy drive interface or the Grease Weasel interface has been mapped through to this virtual machine and uh, just to demonstrate the point if I go into device manager on the machine you should see if we drew into ports that we've got a USB interface there mapped to COM3 and that's the grease weasel okay so I've also installed the grease weasel software here now by default, it just runs this command line utility gw.exe, but I've also got a UI just to make it a little easier to, to fly it. So if we select read from disk here, now because I know that this particular disk has got copy protection installed, I'm going to select SCP and type Amiga. And what that'll effectively do is, uh, is take a flux copy of the disk, which in essence is going to read the uh, <laughs> the magnetism off the uh, off the disk and write it as a as a bitmap um, track by track to a file. Okay, so if we launch that, okay, and you can see here it's going through reading the tracks and taking a raw flux copy of it. So that'll go all the way through. track 80 or 81 at which point it'll realize it's come to the end of the disk and then hopefully it'll successfully have written that to a file okay there we go finished and no errors on that so we'll close this window and we'll come back out of grease weasel and we can close that now if we go and have a look at the directory structure See in disks, here's the buggy boy test.scp that we've just created. If we drag a copy of that onto my Mac desktop, and we can get rid of Windows 10 for now, we finish with that, and then we'll go and fire up FSUAE on the Mac. And if I just browse find the SCP file that we've created and copied over to the uh, the Mac desktop. Okay, so we're just going to run this as uh, Boxland Amiga 500 using 1.3 kickstart ROM. Click start. Okay, now I don't have a joystick or anything plugged in, but we should be able to see, hopefully, if the game is working, or if the SCP file has, uh, has captured a, an accurate copy of the, uh, of the disk game should at least come up to the uh, to the start it should be good enough to prove the point and there you go and you can see yeah it's responding so that looks like a solid copy of that game Need a fire button, don't have a joystick plugged in. But hopefully that's uh, that's good enough to prove the point. Um, one thing to bear in mind, it's an SCP file, not an ADF file. So FSUEE will support SCP files natively, which is great. 
some emulators don't uh, don't believe the uh, the core on the mister does currently that would be a really nice feature if it did um, but uh, once you've got the uh, the SCP file mounted uh, in DF0 or whatever in theory uh, you could then try and copy it via some other means maybe using uh, xcopy to produce uh, another copy of the uh, the ADF uh, I've not actually tried that yet but uh, something to play around with when I get time but there you go hopefully uh, that was useful so if you've got some old Amiga discs or potentially other formats you know Atari ST whatever it happens to be um, or pretty much anything uh, I've only tried this with Amiga discs so far but in theory it'll work with most things um, yeah, if you've got some old discs that you need to uh, to back up before they uh, they die on you, uh, especially if you want to be able to either recreate the original discs again, or, or if uh, if you want to use them on some emulation software or whatever else, then uh, this could be a good option for you. Okay, hopefully that was useful. Catch you later. Cheers.